There is so much happening in the Ethereum universe right now. The fundamentals are so strong. We just keep seeing incredible stories coming out. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a key Ethereum metric that just flipped Bitcoin. Twitter is using Ethereum. Absolutely incredible. A new Ethereum ETF application has been filed in the USA and big money is increasingly taking a notice of just what the heck is happening in the Ethereum verse. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's a topic that you would like to learn some more about, then make sure that you are a subscriber to the Lark Davis channel, that you're gently tapping on the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. And of course, click on the notification bell to know when I put out a new video. So let's just go ahead and get straight into it. And I want to start off today's conversation by talking about this amazing statistic. So Ethereum had about 200,000 more daily active addresses than Bitcoin on Sunday, June 27th. That was, of course, right, earlier in the week. This is only the third day since January 1st, 2017, that Ethereum had more active addresses than Bitcoin. And you can see on this chart, we've had Bitcoin kind of trending down basically most of the year, where Ethereum slowly but steadily trending upwards. There's so many reasons that we're seeing more and more people getting on board with Ethereum. There's just so much more you can do on Ethereum compared to Bitcoin. With Bitcoin, it's pretty simple. You get Bitcoin, you hold on to your Bitcoin, you wait for the number to go up. You escape, escape fiat. But there's not really a lot you need to do besides that. And a lot of this Bitcoin movement is people moving Bitcoin on and off exchanges for trading and stuff like that. But with Ethereum, there's just so much more you can be doing, right? You can be doing DeFi or buying NFTs or sending stable coins or whatever else you might want to do on Ethereum. So many opportunities. But what's interesting too, of course, is it's not just uh, Ethereum that's seen a big uptick in users but also the Polygon Network. We had another big announcement today. Balancer has launched on Polygon with $10 million rewards program. Now, Balancer is a really big Ethereum-based decentralized finance protocol. So this is yet another really big uh, DeFi protocol integrating with Polygon. This is incredible. We've seen so many of the absolute biggest decentralized finance protocols integrating with the Polygon network, Aave and Curve Finance, Balancer now, a lot of others as well. We, of course, still have some really big and prominent outliers. I want to see Bancor. I want to see Wire and Finance. And I want to see freaking Uniswap, man. Come on, Uniswap. What's going on here, dude? Get on board the Polygon train. All the cool kids are doing it, man. Let's go. But this does, of course, show the demand for Ethereum-based applications without having to pay the crushing fees. Because even though the fees for Ethereum have been pretty low recently, they're still unacceptably high. Let's, let's keep it real. If you're using Polygon, you can actually access the majority of the best Ethereum-based applications, but every transaction will only cost you a fraction of a penny. It's no wonder that we've seen the daily users on the Polygon network absolutely freaking exploding. Here we are talking about a day where Ethereum crossed over Bitcoin in terms of those uh, daily active addresses. What about Polygon, man? Though, holy cow. We are seeing just a flood of users coming in to the Polygon network right now, surpassing Bitcoin, surpassing Ethereum, because people want access to all of this cool decentralized finance stuff. They just don't want to have to pay 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks in fees in order to do that. So the Polygon network continuing strong, the Ethereum network continuing strong, of course, those guys. Perfect symbiosis between those two networks. Polygon is a 
side chain for Ethereum, essentially a layer two solution for all of these different decentralized finance applications. So this is great to see. By the way, every single week I produce Wealth Mastery. It is a cryptocurrency investor report. Every single issue, you're going to get the latest token sales, the latest airdrops, a step-by-step -step decentralized finance tutorial, a trending coin report, an in-depth altcoin report, top-tier technical analysis, an interview with an industry leader, and much more much more all of that for less than 10 bucks a week meaning this is the most affordable and at the same time the most value-packed investor report on the market click on the link down below me here where you can learn more and become a member today now let's talk about this twitter news because this is really really big twitter ceo jack dorsey famous hardcore bitcoin maximalist using ethereum Twitter has given away 140 free NFTs. I mean, you get them for free, but let's let's keep it real. This is the first generation release of NFTs that Twitter has ever done. I would imagine that these are NFTs that will, in the long run, maintain some value because this is Twitter's first ever NFT release. But what this indicates, Twitter is using Ethereum. So in spite of all of the rhetoric from the CEO, Jack Dorsey, about, you know, Bitcoin's the best thing in the universe, all that stuff, Ethereum sucks, yada, 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 here is the reality. Twitter still has not, of course, bought Bitcoin for their company reserves, although Jack Dorsey's Square has, but Twitter is using Ethereum. Now, it's not to say that Twitter's gone out and bought a whole bunch of Ethereum as a strategic reserve asset that they're going to hold on to for a long time. In all reality, they you know probably could have got away doing all 140s NFTs and and sending it out to everybody with only having had to buy a few thousand dollars worth of Ethereum. So it's you know not like they've just invested a billion dollars into Ethereum or something like that. But here's the reality. They're using Ethereum, and I think that's a really, really big deal. Twitter is one of the biggest social media platforms in the world. Now we have Reddit that is using Ethereum, and we have Twitter that is using Ethereum. Big stuff here. Very, very exciting stuff. And of course, you might want to ask yourself the question, well, if Jack is such a big Bitcoin maximalist, well, why didn't they issue out these NFTs on Bitcoin? It's a good question, isn't it? The reality is, is that Bitcoin offers much more limited functionality when it comes to doing things like issuing out NFTs or doing decentralized finance. In fact, all of the uh, Bitcoin DeFi that we're seeing right now is all done on layer two or on side chains. It's not done natively in Bitcoin because Bitcoin doesn't have the best functionality for us. Oh, there are limited contract functionalities with Bitcoin. But if we want to talk about releasing an NFT, you're not going to do that using Bitcoin. You're going to do that using Ethereum, which is exactly what Twitter did. Why? Because all of the marketplaces like Rarible and uh, OpenSea, whatever else, Super Rare, all these NFT marketplaces... They're on Ethereum. Oh, sure, you could do it on Binance Smart Chain or something like that too, but the NFT-verse right now predominantly is an Ethereum thing. So this is great news. I'm excited to see Twitter using Ethereum. Maybe we'll see them doing some more stuff with that in the not-so-distant future. Next, let's talk about our newest Ethereum ETF application. I know we talk a lot about the Bitcoin ETF applications, there's 13 Bitcoin ETF applications in right now. But here is another Ethereum ETF application. So we had our first Ethereum ETF application about two or three months ago. Obviously, that has not been approved yet. But we do have a new Ethereum ETF application that has come out. Fantastic. Now, what happened in Canada? I think this is instructive to talk about. What happened in Canada, we saw... Bitcoin ETFs be approved first. Shortly thereafter, we saw Ethereum ETFs getting approved. So now Canada has three or four Bitcoin ETFs and two or three Ethereum ETFs. 
Fantastic. Amazing. I think we're going to see a similar situation happen in the United States. So these guys at Skybridge, pretty clever, right? They're going to get in and hop on the Ethereum train. Well, everyone's out there fighting for the Bitcoin ETF. And to be clear, Skybridge also put in a Bitcoin ETF application. But while everyone is out there trying to get their Bitcoin ETF application, they're going to scoop in and grab an Ethereum ETF probably shortly after the Bitcoin ETF is approved. This is a big deal. When we get these ETFs approved, it's going to unleash a wave of incredible liquidity into these markets. So if, for example, the SEC were to approve just two or three Bitcoin ETFs this year, maybe one or two Ethereum ETFs, that would immediately mean that all these traditional investors, all these big funds, et cetera, et cetera, who are just never going to go out and buy Bitcoin or Ethereum off the open market are now going to have the ability to easily put a Bitcoin ETF or an Ethereum ETF into their retirement accounts. That's a big deal, right? So you can get Bitcoin and have it be tax-free for your retirement. If you're a long-term believer in these assets, that's exactly what you're going to do. A lot of people are going to just want to invest via their brokerage account, even if it's just for shorter-term speculation. These assets are going to be a big deal for bringing liquidity into the market. So great to see another Ethereum ETF application coming through. And to finish up for today, let's talk about Ethereum 2.0 and Ethereum staking. So Ethereum 2.0's staking contract is approaching 6 million staked Ethereum. That is a lot of belief in the ETH 2.0 network and in the ability of developers to deliver on the ETH 2.0 network. So you have to remember, when you lock your Ethereum up in the staking contract, that's a one-way trip. Goes in doesn't come back out. And yeah, you can use a third-party service like uh, Lido, which will give you a proxy token that you can then trade out, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, we're looking at a one-way trip here for this Ethereum, the native Ethereum, not the uh, tokenized versions of the staked Ethereum. That's on a one-way trip. So we're seeing a lot of people putting a lot of money and a lot of faith in the ability of the Ethereum developers to deliver on Ethereum 2.0, which I'm a complete believer that yes, we are going to see the team deliver on ETH 2.0. We are going to see the proof of stake network coming out very, very soon. Now, there is, of course, the reality that we're going to see the proof of stake network actually launching on ETH 1.0, probably by the end of this year, but that's not ETH 2.0. Point o staking. So we're going to see that come out in 2022 uh, in all likelihood. But still incredible. The staking potential for Ethereum, I think big money is starting to wake up to that. And here's some proof of that from our, our old arch nemesis, JP Morgan. These guys, these guys, while well, they are talking about Ethereum, and I bring up JP Morgan talking about Ethereum because it indicates to me that we have a lot of big money players starting to pay a lot of attention to Ethereum. So JP Morgan says Ethereum upgrades could jumpstart a $40 billion staking industry. You can, of course, already stake your Ethereum, right? But I think when we see Ethereum 2.0 come out, when we have the ability to get in and get out quickly with your Ethereum, I think we're going to see a lot of big money coming in. We're already starting to see big money coming in, but right now the big money players who are coming into Ethereum, they're the forward thinkers, right? They're the ones who are buying, who bought Apple stocks, we should say, at a $200 billion market cap versus the guys who are buying it now at a $2 trillion market cap. They're the ones who are forward thinking, looking around the curve, understanding what this asset is and why it's so important. Ethereum is it's the settlement layer of the internet in a way in which Bitcoin is just never going to be. Ethereum is running stable coins across it and it has borrowing and lending markets and credit markets and NFT markets and all of this stuff happening. And for all of that, you need the core Ethereum asset, which obviously is going to bring in a burn mechanism pretty soon, which is basically an automated perpetual stock buyback mechanism. That's EIP-1559. 
Then of course we have the staking rewards, which pay out and more of that asset. So that would be like if you're holding Apple stocks and they paid you more Apple stocks, which then earned you more Apple stocks. That's exactly what Ethereum is doing. The big money crowd, as JP Morgan is indicating here, is starting to wake up to the reality of this asset class. And when we get the Ethereum ETF coming through and we have more social proofing from big companies like Twitter actually using Ethereum, game-changing stuff we're talking about here, guys. Absolutely game-changing. The long-term picture for Ethereum, the fundamentals for Ethereum, never been better, and they just keep getting better. Anyway, your question for today. Do you think we will get an Ethereum ETF approved in the USA in 2021? Or is that a bit too optimistic? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.